That's right, this is Jeremiah, Jay Man Monero with J Man Speaks. Welcome to A Team Fridays. That's Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Fridays. We're getting down today. I'm not wearing the coat because I'm feeling hot. I'm feeling hot because the market's hot. It is on fire. And today we'll be talking about multiple offers because it's not going away. And every single week I get a different question from an agent. And I'm like, I thought you would know that, but let me help you. So if you've had multiple offers at all in the last six months, put it in the comments. Say yes, hell yes, or freaking hell yes, or whatever you want to put in there. We've all had multiple offers. I want to thank everybody who's watching live. We got, let's see, we got Adam Jacques from Laurel, Montana. Shout out to you, buddy. We got our faithful listener. I want to say listener. Uh, Dr. Jeffrey Scott Stanton from New York City area. Thank you for tuning in. We have Anna Pasillas, or Pasillas, I'm not sure, Anna, maybe you're Hispanic and I'm going to say Pasillas. Uh, thanks for tuning in from Chicago suburbs. And then we have Billy Parrot from Billings, Montana. That's weird, Billy, that your, your, your picture didn't show up there. All right, that's okay. So we're talking about multiple offers. Uh, I would love for you to put any kind of scenario that you have in the comments because I really want to make this an ask the expert anything. I'll give you a subject and you're like, yo, here's a scenario. Here's what happened this week. Do you think uh, how I could have handled it better or how can I, uh, you know, get my offer accepted? But I have prepared some. Don't worry. I have prepared some content for you today. We're going to be talking, I think, first. All right, Anna. I got it right. I got it right. Ana, pasi, just me now. Como la cosa. Habla Jeremia Manero. Uh, Jeremia, I did the Rookie Perez Manero, see? Aquí en la lucha, como siempre. Uh, but this is a bilingual bar broadcast, if you guys didn't know that. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I have some scenarios. I'm going to break it down for, uh, if you're representing a seller, different ways you can represent the seller. Then I'll get into representing a buyer. And then I'll, I guess, finish off with the escalation clauses. Uh, because so different, every part of the country, even, in, you know, I'm in New York State. Different parts of the state are different. Different parts of my city are different, okay? People are like, no, this is the law. And there's there's what's customary in your market, and there is what the actual law and code of ethics, because that also ties into it. Okay, so let me do what I want to do first. I think I'm going to cut to my other camera. It's going to be the whiteboard. One moment, please. Oh, do I have the whiteboard set up here? This is it. All right. I'm walking over here. Do, 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 do. You can see me now. Do, 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 do. Okay, so here's my scenario. A tale of three offers. It's like a tale of three cities, but it's offers, right? Tale of three offers. Um, here's our, our scenario. I have one offer, and I'm going to say my list price, because this matters as well, is two seven. Okay, and I understand that some of you who are watching, if you're in like uh, Chicago or New York, you're like, 279, what are they buying? A co-op, a condo, a parking space? I get it. Okay, but this is realistic, you know, across the country, since we have people watching from all over. So if we go here, this price 275. We got one offer that comes in cash money. And this guy, I, I want to say, it's very much an agent who's saying, well, we're writing an offer cash. You know, pop and collar, that kind of thing. Great, fantastic. Here's what matters, right? At closing, what does your seller get? Cash. Okay. Just wanna not cash money, but they get official check, they get the money either way. So two ninety five. Second offer is conventional with twenty five percent down. Now they have an escalation clause. Escalation of one thousand over the highest offer. Okay, so that brings their offer to 296 with me so far. That escalation has a cap of 310,000. Third offer, FHA. Boy, these poor FHA buyers are very, very frustrated. They've written 17 offers, haven't had one accepted yet. They write a they write an escalation and they say 29,000 over 
the highest bona fide offer. Okay. Yeah. Twenty nine thousand. So that brings their offer up to three hundred and twenty five thousand. Now, I understand as you're watching this, you may go, no brainer, bro, no brainer. Three twenty five all day is the highest number. It's it's what's the highest offer as written. Uh, what matters is what the seller can actually get at closing, right? Because this has an appraisal, right? And this has an appraisal. So my next question, I'm going to call the first agent and say, thank you, thank everybody, right? Thank you for the offer. I greatly appreciate it. However, we are at this point 20, 45,000 over asking. If, and I'd like to say when, if this doesn't appraise, can your buyer show proof of funds to pay the difference? If the if the agent looks at you, or you know, you hear him on the phone going, "Well, no, uh, how could they do that? They're going to FHA, FHA three and a half percent down. How could they possibly pay the difference?" And I say, "Well, you're you're offering an amount. That's what the seller would like to see at closing. Oh, well, if it doesn't appraise, they're they're, they're not going to go through with it." All right, then why not offer a million dollars? Why not offer two million if it doesn't matter what the seller actually gets? So if they don't have some, I'm not going to say, you know, there are some people I've heard of in this world who would offer the, the absolute highest and then hope to renegotiate if it doesn't appraise. Okay, now, you're a savvy seller's agent, you're going to ask that question. It's something you've never asked before in your life because we've never seen a market like this before in our life. Now, we come back over here to the conventional, 25% down, they're still over, you know, 16 over, right, 17 over, uh, over the hot, or over the list price. However, they're conventional 25% down with a cap of 310. I can go back to this agent and I say, Mr. Agent, or Mrs. Agent, do you have, uh, will your buyer pay the difference if it doesn't appraise? However, with that much down, there's many banks that are doing what are called desktop appraisals or drive-by appraisals because there's so much equity in the property that they don't even go in the house sometimes. I'm not going to say that's a, that's a written rule, but that has happened, happened to me recently. Now, um, the likelihood that they do is, is pretty good because they're putting 25% down if it's a conventional product. They could probably go 5% down if it doesn't appraise, right? And I would talk to the mortgage officer and make sure that they're okay with that. You get all that in writing, right? That's part of a counteroffer. Here's the other sticking point for me. I have this, right? 295 and 296. This one is cash, and this one is financing. So there's still the appraisal and all that we have to work out. We're leaving inspections out, out of this conversation right now. So they're $1,000 apart. For $1,000, my recommendation might be go with the cash offer. So if you are working with buyers that have conventional financing or financing in general, and you find yourself in a multiple offer situation and you're going to be using an escalation clause, why in the hell wouldn't you put a higher, um, a higher escalation? Right? A thousand dollar difference isn't enough. If I was, uh, I would say minimum, minimum in this market, probably five thousand in this scenario. If this is a half a million dollar property, that might be 10,000. So if we wanted to use a rule of thumb, I would say 2%. Yeah, 2% um, is a good number. One, one and a half to 2% uh, of, a, of an escalation over the highest bona fide offer, right? Now, other things to discuss. This person gave me a cap of 310. Uh, right in their escalation, they gave me a cap of 310. Because I'm not really considering this one, I'm not going on 1,000 over this one because they can't really do anything. And now, if you like, that's really fair. But, another discussion. They can go up to 310. So they have told me that their buyer is willing to pay 310,000. As a seller's agent and as a buyer's agent, there's two things you need to understand there. As a buyer's agent, you have given up your fiduciary duty of confidentiality and told me what you're willing to pay. 
as a seller's agent, I have to heed your advice and tell my seller, well, they have said that they're willing to pay 310000 So I don't have to, I don't have to uh, exercise the escalation clause, right? I can, with any offer, you can accept it, you can counter it, you cannot respond. So in this example, what I would do, I would say, i call back the conventional and I'd say, hey, are you guys willing to go up to 310? Uh, you are competing with a cash offer. That's what it's worth to the seller to take the risk of going with the financing. Hey, you don't have to disclose what the cash number is. But that's what I would tell them. If they don't want to, they could also counter or not respond. Right? So it's, it's up to them to say, okay, well, you know, maybe we'll go 305. And you don't make these decisions. You just have to get the different scenarios to your seller and let them decide. All right. See if we have any questions right now. Do, 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 do. No questions, you guys. Really good listeners. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. You guys got that so far? Now let's talk about escalation. Picture pages, picture pages. This here for a second. Now let's say I have three offers again with three escalation clauses that have no cap. So same scenario, the list price is 275 and this one, three offers, one, two, three. The, the highest bona fide offer you currently have is, let's go back to the other scenario, let's say it's 310. So with no cap, that means these people don't have a ceiling on where they're willing to go, which is a theory because it can't be unlimited, right? They just want to get the phone call. So 310, you then have to look at um, the escalation amount, how much. Right, because with my highest bone fight, it's not an escalation or escalating to the highest escalator, if you will, is 310. Then, if this one is five, this one is seventy-five hundred, and this one is ten. Even though they have no cap, this one is going to go uh, three fifteen. This one's going to go three seventy-five, and this one's going to go three twenty. Okay. Regardless of whether they have no cap, you still then have to look at the escalator how much of a difference between the highest bona fide price. Does that make sense? And then the second step is, is what we just talked about, uh, which is do they have the money to pay the difference between what it will sell for uh, or what the offer price was and what it will actually appraise. That's how we, I evaluate. Uh, come back over here. I'm going to change the cameras. Change the cameras for you, everybody. Okay. All right. That being said, now when you you if you're hopefully you guys are listing agents. If not, you got a list to last. You know what I'm saying? Uh, in this market, especially, but you're getting a lot of offers, and God forbid if you ever forgot to present an offer because your email box is so cluttered or they sent it and didn't tell you, or it got sent, you know, put into your spam folder. There's a lot of, you'd be a deep doo-doo, right? Not, maybe not be your fault, maybe just you're inept with technology. Uh, what I would suggest is a really simple workaround. Just create an email address for offers. <laughs> right? Create an email address for offers. So what you do is, um, let's say, you know, my, with the Monero team, it could be the Monero team offers at gmail.com. I don't care. It's not one where you need a vanity email address. It's just an email address where all of your offers will come. All of them. Right? You put that in your private remarks. Agents, please send all offers to Monero team offers at gmail.com. Now they're all there. You don't have to look for them. When an offer comes in, you get an email thing saying, you know, here it is, and you're all good. Good to go. All right. All right, folks. Man, everybody quiet today. Can you guys hear me? 
Is this thing on? I'm going to play the bum 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 drums. Okay. Thank you, Billy. Somebody's talking. Billy said I had a great idea. Finally, I had one great idea out of all the things I talked about so far. Um, thank you, Billy. Thank you. Yes. Th okay, Lolly, thank you so much as well. Let me give you... Thank you for tuning in. So here's the... Uh, I'm going to go over to this screen and show you. These are some examples of escalation clauses. And uh, I've redacted the people's information to protect the innocent. Uh, but you see what we're working with here. All right, first one. Make sure that that's big enough for you guys to read, yeah? Okay, the one that's highlighted. Escalation clause. Buyer's offer will be 2000 over highest bona fide offer. Redacted first and second pages to be provided. Oh, forgot the D. Somebody forgot the D. As proof of highest offer. Okay, I like that. If there is no cap is the only thing I would add to it. If there is no cap, I would put in there, no cap. Yes. Yes, I do. Um, great question, Billy. Let me let me address that in one second. So Billy's question, let me just address it now. Uh, do you ask for a proof of funds letter to prove that they can pay over the appraised value? Absolutely. This is real estate. I love you guys, but you cannot take somebody's word when you're talking about, you know, representing their best interests. So I would say to the agent... I need proof of funds to show if they're going to do 20% down, um, that they have 20% down plus the difference between my list price and the, and the price that you offered. That's the worst case scenario, right? I mean, the likelihood if they're going conventional and they're going 25%, 30% down, that they could dial it back to 5% if it didn't appraise, but I want worst case scenario. So that, that's a great question, Billy. 100% ask for proof of funds in their name. Liquid funds, right? It's not like a retirement account that then they have to cash out and there's tax consequences and all that. All right, so you see the first one? Now let me... Yeah, I can move this up, right? Yeah. Woo! Okay. Uh, second one you see here is buyer and seller should agree to the following. Should a competing offer be submitted prior to the seller returning and approval, the buyer will increase the purchase price by 2600 above a competing offer to a maximum of 281000 Seller authorizes listing agent to provide complete signed competing contract, including proof of funds to buyer's agent and buyer's attorney prior to have buyer attorney approval. Wow! Okay. There's, you know, there's a couple of different questions or problems that can arise with providing the entire contract, right? Because you might say, who's to say that your price with with financing is better than this other price with cash or, you know, so there's a bunch of stuff going on there. But let me scroll this one up because this is this one I think is somebody who wants to be an attorney when they grow up. Uh, in the event seller receives bona fide offer from another financially qualified buyer that is not contingent on the sale of a home and that exceeds 135000 net of, net of any seller concessions, the buyer agrees to increase the offer above the offer to a maximum price of 150000 so that the seller will accept this offer from instead of an offer from another buyer. The seller agrees to immediately provide buyer and buyer's agent with a copy of the bona fide competing offer and the related bank requalification competing offer to establish the final sales price under this agreement. The terms of this escalation agreement shall terminate immediately upon the expiration of this purchase offer agreement or the final acceptance of this purchase offer agreement by both of whichever comes first. Yo, you're practicing law with that one. Keep it simple. Um, leave it up to the attorneys. Like you can have a conversation. And I, um, oh shoot, I'll bring it back, bring it back, bring it back, y'all. Yeah. Um, let the attorneys handle this. If, if you know, maybe your your broker does have like an escalation form, and that's great. Um, again, just keep in mind when you're talking about caps or no caps that you may get a counter offer for the highest price that you put in there, the cap that you put in there. Don't be bent out of shape. You need to have a conversation with your buyer. It's your fault if the buyer's PO'd because you didn't give them reasonable expectations. What I would say is, hey, how high do you want to go? How bad do you want this? You get the cap, you then share, you, you're like, I have to, sh and I'm sharing this with this seller's agent. They may just counter us at three, well, that's not fair. They have to do it if it's a competing offer. No, they don't. You can accept it, you can counter, or you cannot respond. So if I counter your offer, I'm just countering your offer. 
and you've told me what you're willing to pay. So do you want to, do you want to like argue? It's semantics at this point. Do you want the house or not? Here's the price. Don't get into, oh, well, uh, you have to show me all five pages and stand on one foot and it should be sunny that day or we're not going to perform under this escalation clause. Guess what? And then you get the house. Okay, so you can play the tough guy routine, but let's face it, uh, to succeed as a buyer's agent in this market, you have to be nice. You have to be nice. Uh, you have to know <laughs> know what you're doing. Um, and we're seeing some crazy things all, all over the country with people offering uh different things to entice the seller to take their offer you know there's there's buyers agents who are getting paid directly by the buyer so that the seller doesn't come out of the net proceeds of the seller uh, paying the commission uh, we have people that are giving like gym memberships country club memberships um, I heard one one case of season tickets to the local professional football team I heard one uh, season tickets for basketball like these are outside of the transaction who knows? Okay. Um, I will say, uh, since we're not really having any more questions, and we're almost coming up to our thirty minutes, uh, any time that I can, I will do a video. Okay. I will do a video for my clients. Um, let's see if I can. If I can find one for you. Maybe I'll show you. Uh, but you guys know that I love BombBomb.com because it is the bomb, and. And you might say, well, a video is just like a love letter. And I'm not saying anything that, you know, some of our states frown upon love letters. It's not legal. They just say it's not in your best interest to do it because it gives the seller the opportunity to discriminate on any number of protected classes. Okay? But one step further, I think they should just redact the buyer's names because a lot of time the buyer's names can also give them an opportunity to discriminate. Let's see, offer, offer, baby. Let's see what I can find in here. Somebody give me a question while I segue. I'm going to go out my day. Hey, there we go. I got some. Uh, making sure there's not any confidential information. All right. Here we go. I'm going to try to share this. Come back over here to the shared screen, and then I'm going to share this other screen. Primary view. Drop this out. All right. You ready? Here we go. So this is what the bomb bomb email looks like when it's received. If you want to get a bomb bomb uh, account, it's bomb.jmanseminars.com. Get you a free trial and all of my additional resources and templates. Okay. You got it. So this comes in, and you can see, like, I've lifted, listed here. Again, I want to make sure I don't have anything in there. It's not it's supposed to be. Uh, so the buyer is pre-approved with conventional finance, financing through MNT Bank with Bill Terwilliger, which is he's a well-known uh, loan officer in our area. Uh, he submitted docs and verified everything. We just need to identify the home and have an appraisal done. He is approved up to the 115k, but was being conservative when he obtained his letter. So I think the letter has less. So I just want to put it that, you know, how high this person was uh, approved up to. He wants to do his information. Uh, he wants to do an inspection for his own information, not a contingency. Also another strategy, right? If, if your buyer um, has any kind of like, I work with buyers, first time home buyers that have grant programs uh, that, that are working with NACA and they can't waive their inspection. Uh, nor would I recommend that they do that because we're protecting our buyers, right? It would, it's buyer beware in our state. If they buy something and there's some issues, you're, you know, everybody's screwed at that point. So keep that in mind. I don't care if you sign a waiver or not. But, okay, um, he wants to do an inspection for his own information, not a contingency. Uh, we will try to close as soon as possible at the end of March, being a possibility as long as the seller has survey and title work done promptly. Again, in our state, uh, well, in our area, the seller provides survey and title. That's what can hold it up. Uh, which is, has been holding up transactions lately. If you're in an area like Montana, which are, you guys might be selling like acreage and acreage and acreage, like that survey might take a while. If you do surveys, um, want that order as soon as possible. He is gainfully employed at the blank XXX with a slim to no chance of being laid off or furloughed. Um, so I can say that uh, this 
particular client was gainfully employed at the Greater Rochester Airport, which is now called the Frederick Douglass uh, International Airport after Frederick Douglass. Uh, so I did put that in there. I just X it out, but I can tell you guys that that's, that's fine. Right? Place of employment is not a protected class. So I could say they're a doctor at the local hospital. Right? University of Rochester in our area is the number one employer. I could say they're a police officer. Um, I could say they're a fire, you know, they work for the fire department. Uh, they're a teacher at the local school district. Uh, protected, you know, employment is not a protected class. Type of employment. Um, let's see. My client and I have looked at dozens of homes, and this is the first one that he loved enough to call it home. Now, I am saying he, it could be a potential protected class, but they know that from his name, right? This client, maybe his name was Jose. Pretty sure it was. Um, but I'm just saying, this is the first one that he loved enough to call it home. Again, I'm making it less of a transaction and more, you know, once you can connect with people on a heart-to-heart -heart level, that their buyer really loves their home if it's somebody who's lived there a long time, that's where, where buyer letters were very, very popular. Uh, but I'm just stating the facts here. He loves everything about it and can see himself living and making memories here for a very long time. This particular buyer may have had a wife and kids. I didn't make any mention of that at all whatsoever. Um, I thank you in advance for presenting the offer and giving us the opportunity to compete for this home. I look forward to working with you. Then the purchase offer is linked in there, so I know this is the only way I send it. I know when they open the email on the back end. I know when they click the link for the purchase offer, and I know if they played the video. So I will say to them, please play this video for the seller. There's nothing in here that violates fair housing laws uh, whatsoever, just explaining the offer and, and factual data about, about the buyer. So... Hi, Tracy. This is Jeremiah J. Man Monero with the Monero team at Remax Realty Group. Please forward to this to the sellers. I promise there's nothing in here that would constitute a love letter. Uh, to start off, my client has been pre-approved uh, with Bill Turwiller. Okay, again, back in the day when I was a kid, I'm not a kid anymore, but some days I sit and wish I was a kid again. Uh, but back in the day, we used to be able to present offers in person directly to the seller. Right? If you take the ABR class from me, we always talked about you know, every time you have the opportunity to try to present in person so that you can be face to face and, and tell the story of the buyer. Okay. Hopefully that helps you win, win, win. Um, cause I can tell you some of the scenarios that I showed you in regards to accepting the counter offer and no, accepting those multiple offers as the seller's agent. This week I got a seller that I'm working with another $15,000. They're just originally going to take the cash offer. And I'm like, well, you can count on this one, even though there's financing. So be skillful, right? Do everything you can. Um, if, if, oh, and here's the other thing. It's not always about the money because then we were also able to negotiate that that person's going to close in 30 days, but then the seller's going to do post-possession until the end of the school year, which is the end of June. And that puts them in a great position to buy a home because uh, they're moving to Florida. So watching this, Florida realtor, holler at your boy, I think, uh, New York State should be your number one your realtor of the year we have so many clients moving forward that's ridiculous okay all right folks thanks for tuning in it's jeremiah it's j man monero with j man speaks seeing no other questions i want to wish you a merry christmas <laughs> well, no i'm kidding um let me go to my music over here see where my a team is there it is so thank you for tuning in to ask the effort also don't take friday